Hallelujah. Amen. Last week, Bazalwane, you true nature of our victory. Amen. And some of the things I touched from the message was that the Bible says our warfare is not against flesh and blood. Our warfare, our warfare is not against. But it's against principalities, powers, rulers of this dark age. And then it mentions a couple of things that our warfare is targeted against. And I said, because our warfare is not against flesh and blood, it also means our victory will not be a victory of flesh and blood. Although our victory in the spirit realm may manifest naturally, it does not change the fact that the battle remains a spiritual battle. Hallelujah. A battle remains a spiritual battle. And I had to, during that preaching, caution the church from taking every scripture to be meaning or to be containing flesh and blood outcome. Amen. For instance, when Jesus spoke about him being the king of the Jews, and people also writing to say he is the king of the Jews. They took it literal. And that's why they crucified him. And the reason I'm using this scripture is so that I can show me and you that it's not every scripture that we study in the Bible where the outcome is going to be flesh and blood outcome. Hallelujah. And that's why in the church you still have people that are angry at God that are discouraged and that are on the verge of giving up because they have not obtained or achieved flesh and blood outcome from the scriptures they read or studied. That's why it is difficult for believers to stand in church and say, Bazalwan, I've got a testimony and my testimony is, is I want to share with you that I am blessed because I am hungry and I'm poor in the spirit. Because for believers to give such a testimony that they are blessed, they must have or there must be something tangible. So we have so created a church that depends and that pursues tangible things. And because we are pursuing tangible things, which in a world that is a systematic world, by virtue of some systems, we are unable to obtain or achieve or acquire 
tangible things which we are using to measure God's provisions in our lives. Which we are using to measure our blessedness life in God. And I want to use some few scriptures today and then we shortly can go home. Amen. But don't forget the scripture that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. That's why previously I said to parents that has it never crossed your mind as to what are you dealing with when it comes to your children? That you beat them day and night. You beat them weekly, you beat them monthly, you beat them every year, but their behavior is not changing. Because when you beat a person, you are beating the flesh, and the behavior of the person, as much as is a flesh matter, it's not informed by the flesh, but it's informed by what is inside of a person. So to change a person's behavior, you must address what is inside a person. So our victory is going to start in the spirit. And when it is in the spirit, it can then manifest naturally or physically. Amen. Look at the neighbor and say, our warfare it's not against flesh and blood. Stop fighting against flesh and blood. Because let me, let me tell you this. When you avenge or when you pay revenge, you have resorted to a flesh and blood warfare. Amen. Amen. You have resorted to flesh and blood warfare. And I've realized that it is easy for most of us to fight in the flesh and blood realm. Because spiritually, we have not armored ourselves. So we then do the simple, which is flesh and blood. So, I'm going to share with you quickly on strategies to bring about a victorious life for you. Strategies. Strategies on how to position yourself for a victorious life. Because I believe all of us wants to live a victorious life. But I want to repeat again that victory does not always mean flesh and blood victory. Because I don't want you tomorrow to wait until you have punched someone down and you say, I am victorious. Hallelujah. Let's open... Matthew 26. Matthew 26. How to position yourself for a victorious life. Remember last week we said, the Bible says, those who are born of God, they overcome the world, isn't it? Those who are born of God. And who are they who are born of God? Those that believe that Jesus is the Christ are born of God. And remember we said God is a spirit. So those who are born of God, because God is a spirit, they are spirit beings. Because I pray that, that, that God will, will give you a revelation on this. Because th there's so much power and life in the scripture. 
that those who believe that Jesus is the Christ, they are born of God. If understand. I want you to take it literally. Just imagine Uluko Spetel go maternity ward. So go show goti upume kunkulunkuru. Mina nyaizu. Mina nyaizu lenda. Ngoba si zalwe kabusha si pume kunkulunkuru si zalwe kunkulunkuru. Your body was born out of your mom and your father. But the day you believed that Jesus is the Christ, the Bible says you were born of God. You came out of God. Not the body you, but the spirit you. The spirit you came out of God. And that is the spirit that the Bible says it overcomes the world. The body you does not overcome the world. But the spirit you overcomes the world. So our victory is a victory of the spirit man and not necessarily and only the physical or the natural man. So you must understand that victory. So if we look at Matthew 26 verse 31, it says, Watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Hallelujah. It says, Watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body body is weak so 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 the spirit you is willing to do the right things hallelujah the spirit you is what is willing to live a holy life but it says the body is weak the flesh and blood is weak and listen to this it says watch and pray when you pray, prayer, as much as you verbalize it, prayer is a language of the spirit. Prayer is the language of the spirit. So when the Bible says watch and pray, and uh, watch and pray, so, so that's so that you will not enter into temptation. It means if you do not take care of the spirit man that is being born of God, the flesh and blood you is going to overcome or overpower the spirit you and because then it will have overcome the spirit you, you are going to live after flesh and blood. So the first strategy to employ to experience a victorious life is a strategy of prayer. Can we say prayer? Believers must go to prayer. Believers must go back to prayer. I usually say, tell me how much you pray and I will tell you how far you are from sinning. Because a prayerless believer is a sinful believer. Ah, oh, let me repeat it. A prayerless believer is a sinful believer. So it says the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me take you back a little bit when you were still a baby. When you were born, did our parents give birth to us and dump us? No. What did they do? They breastfed us. But if I didn't understand, soft porridge, how some of the trees are shepherd in Bob with the Mundo Morik and a sharp. 
and, and they give you bottled milk, isn't it? That's how they used to do it. So they were feeding their flesh and blood, you and me. Hallelujah. Now, now that we are born of God, who is a spirit, the question is, why, how are we feeding the spirit being? Because without him being fed, he cannot grow. No wonder some of us are not growing spiritually because we are not feeding the spirit man. One last time, did you, did, did you buy a Christian book and, 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 and read it and study it? One last time before this service today, did you really give yourself time to study the Bible and make notes for yourself? And yet we expect to grow. And yet we expect to live a victorious life. So he says, watch and pray. So prayer positions me and you to experience a victorious life. Amen. And then we move to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. It says, I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Oh, God. It is, I have written because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, you and you have overcome the evil one. The second strategy that me and you can employ to live or to experience a victorious life is the word. Hallelujah. Is the word. The first one I said is what? Prayer. Of course it's not in order of importance or whatever, but it's just a number. I'm just listing them. First one is prayer. The second one is the word. It says, because the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. I usually say for those who understand IT, that the word of God in us works like an antivirus. Anything that comes to us that is not supposed to be in us and anything that comes to us that is going to contaminate us, the word of God inside of us rejects it. It kicks it out. Now, any believer who is a recipient of everything, negative talks, uh, gossip, uh, and, and, and unbelief, and many things, is, is because you are uh, empty of the word. You, you don't have an antivirus. That's why our lives are contaminated. The reason we are all over as believers and the reason we, we sometimes appear to be weak and to be easily falling is because we don't have antivirus. That's why just those of you who have got laptops or computers or whatever you have, even your phone, what happens when there's a virus in your phone or in your device? It slows down. Isn't it? It's out of control. It chooses when to switch off and on. And it frustrates you and me, you know, so sometimes our lives are slowed down because there's a virus spiritual in us. Sometimes our lives are out of order because there's a virus inside our system. We are no longer subjected to, to, to the control of the person who owns us. We are now uh, uh, subjected to the control of the virus. Because your laptop or your device can switch off without you. Why? Because the control or virus has taken control of the device. So that's what happens. Without the word of God inside of us, which abides in us and enables us to overcome the evil one. Whenever there's a wrong spirit inside of us, we become subjected to the control and the wishes and the desires of that spirit that has come to be inside of us. So if you want to live a victorious life, the weight. The weight. Prayer and the weight. And let's go to another one. Ecclesians. Ecclesians. 4 verse 12. 
4, verse 12. He says, And though one may be overpowered, two can resist. Moreover, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Another strategy, the Bible says, a bad company corrupts good character. A bad company corrupts good character. Equally so, a good company will strengthen you. So the third strategy that I've put here is partnership. It's fellowship. You cannot afford to be a loner as a believer. You must check how the, 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 the lions and, 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 and the leopards and, and the tigers, you must check how they hunt. What they do, they will see a flock of animals. And because they're a group, they don't just attack. They move strategically to isolate one of their prey from the rest. If, if you don't understand this, the best way to understand it is to go and watch National Geographic, then you can understand this thing. So, so the animals, the, 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 the lions uh, will, 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 will check. Will, will in fact, sometimes they hide. Have you seen? They hide in the, in, in, in the bush or in the grass. And, and they are focused. When you may think they are looking at every prey there. Because the, if they were looking at every prey, they will never be successful. So they, they, they just watch for the weakest one. And by Abu Nugut, let you weak. While they are looking there, the focus is on the weak one. And when they take the first step, trust me, it is, I always, I've, I've watched this thing. The weak one does not go to the direction the rest is going. It goes to the wrong direction. And that's how they mostly get caught. That's why you will see that the, the, the flock will just have to come back and try to rescue this one because it was going the wrong direction. And that's how Satan captures most of believers. He observes from a distance. He hides and he targets you. And when, once he has made a decision to say, now, 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 super is my target, he isolates you from the crowd and he observes your movements and he observes how you pray. He observes how you conduct yourself. And once he is done, then he takes a first step. And as all of us keep, keep company, when you isolate yourself, and as you isolate yourself, yourself that's when then he comes on you he comes on you that's how Satan works he isolates you from your brothers and sisters in the church he isolates you from people of the way he isolates you from holy people. He isolates you from people who are prayerful. Because once he knows that you are isolated from, from these people, then he no longer has anyone that is a threat to him. And once he has isolated you, then he captures you. He captures you. That's what the Bible says. If any brother falls into sin, those that are holy. Those that are righteous must go and rescue him. But they must be careful that they themselves do not. Because the rescue mission Mazalwani, is not as easy as you think it is. You must even check these animals. One, one, once, 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 once the leopards or, 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 or the lions have, 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 have got their prey, even those others, they calculate their moves. Must we go back and rescue? What if we become the next prey. The best we can do is to stand from a distance and say, Tamaya! Tamaya! And if, they, if Satan doesn't leave you, hi, there's nothing we can do. We can't get closer. Because we've got to be careful. When we save you from sin, we've got to do it in such a way that we are careful that we don't fall into the very same sin ourselves. So partnership. Can you say partnership? So he says, and though one may be overpowered, one, two can resist. 
Moreover, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Bazaran, stop being a loner in the kingdom. And while you are not a loner in the kingdom, Mark, can you also equally so? Be careful of the company you keep. The fact that these people are in church does not translate in that they are a good company. There is a bad company in the church and it's going to corrupt your good character. There's bad companies in the church. There's a bad company in the church. So you have that bad company in the church that is going to corrupt your good character. You have that bad company in the church that every time the church leadership says something, they oppose. And they've infected you now Previously, you were not questioning, you were not opposing. Now you are the major opposer of the church programs and what pastors and leadership is saying. So, don't be a loner. Start looking for people who are prayerful and join them. Start looking for people who spend time in the word and join them. Start looking for people who are holy, people who fear sin, people who hate sin, and they will never want to find themselves next to sin. Look for those people and keep company with them, and you will benefit, and you will grow spiritually, and you will thank yourself. This notion and narrative of saying, no, I can keep company with them, but I don't have to do what they do. It's fine. It's, it's your own decision. Keep company with them and don't do what they do. But all I can tell you, this Bible says a, good com a bad company corrupts a good character. I've not seen the scripture that says a good company strengthens a good character or a character. Because it is easy to do bad than to do good. It is easy. It is easy. Let's look at James chapter 1 verse 23 to 24. James chapter 1. Then we can close. Uh, two more scriptures, then we close. James chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. It says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of a person he was. Now, the, 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 the fourth strategy is to know yourself in God. The fourth strategy is to know yourself in God. Know who you are. Because it says, this person hears the word but doesn't do the word. It's like, a, but son, please think about it. Think about it. You definitely, if such a person, you definitely need some, some form of divine intervention or psychological intervention. If you were to look at yourself at a mirror and within two seconds you don't even know how you look like... This is the worst. This is the worst. Just imagine you don't even know how you look like. So he says a man who hears the word and does not do it is like a person who sees, who looks at himself in a mirror and leaves and now forgets what he looks like. It doesn't say a man who hears the word only. It says a man who hears and does not do. I've been saying it. That we are not short of the word in the church. We are short of the doers of the word in the church. If all of us were to do the word, a church will become a better place. But the challenge is we listen to the word, but we don't do it. We don't practice the word. We, we study the word, we read the word. But we don't do what we are hearing. We don't do what we are studying. We don't do what we are reading. So for such a person, the Bible says, you're like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and leaves and forgets what he looks like. So if you want to be victorious in Christ, become the doer of the word. Hallelujah. Become the doer of the, of the word. When the, be, like, be like a baby. Be like a child. 
When the Bible says give, give. When the Bible says forgive, forgive. When the Bible says love, love. Don't question many things. Just do the what the Bible says. When the Bible says be holy, be holy. Don't question many things. Just be holy. Tell your neighbor, please be the doer of the word. Be the doer of the word. Do the word. When the word says, do not give in church, immediately when you remember that you are not in good terms with your brother or a sister at home, go fix, go fix relationships. Go fix relationships. Don't argue and reason how hurt you are. You are not the doer of the word. You are a hearer of the word. And the Bible says, you are like a man who looks at a mirror and can see himself, but immediately when he turns and looks the other direction, he forgets how he looks like. Hey, that's a very serious problem if you come to think about it. And let's look at another one, Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, 37, it says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The fifth strategy is to remain in Christ. Hallelujah. The fifth strategy to, to, be, to, to remain victorious or to live a victorious life is to remain in Christ. I'm sure daily or weekly or monthly or yearly, there are a lot of people who are losing faith in God, isn't it? They are losing faith. Some, some people have been disappointed. Their expectations were not met. Because they came to God with expectation. And two months went by. A year went by. The expectations were not met. And decided Or this thing I say is Isn't it? You've seen those people. But I'm saying the best way when to come to God is to not to come with your expectations, but to come to his expectations. Come to his expectations. And what I can tell you is his expectations will include your expectations. Because he says, for I know the plans I have for you. The plans to prosper you and not to harm you. The plans to give you hope. So God knows the plans he has for you. And his plans are not bad plans. They are good plans. They are good for me and you. So, there is victory in Christ. And listen, most of the scriptures that we have read here, including the, the one that says, no, in all these things we know we are more. It doesn't say we know we are going to be more than conquerors. It says we are more. In other words, we are already more than conquerors. We are not going to be victorious. We are already victorious. We just have to learn how to walk in victory. We just have to, uh, have to learn how to, to become more than conquerors. Because already, listen, Bazanan, I so wish some of us sometimes can look at ourselves with God's eyes. You may have failed, you may be weak, but God doesn't see you as a weak person. That's why I don't believe in this thing of saying people have got weaknesses. I believe God made me perfect. People are unique. We don't have weaknesses. What makes you decide to say this is a weakness and this is a strength? No. It says we are more than conquerors. God doesn't see you as a loser. No, you're not a loser. And until me and you agree with how God looks at us, we are not going to experience the life that God has meant for us, which is a victorious life. When you approach a situation in your life, you must approach it from a knowledge that yes, this situation is a challenge, but the Bible says concerning me that I am more than a conqueror. So, even before this challenge, the outcome, God has already decided. 
when you have to decide whether you are going to agree with God's outcome or not. Because the outcome is there, given. When you are sick, the Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Not we are going to be healed. We were healed. Before sickness, you were healed. So when you face sickness, you must understand that the outcome of your sickness was already decided by God. And what is that outcome? It's healing. You must just learn how to walk and take that healing. The last scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, it says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory comes from God. Hallelujah. Victory comes from God. Many people are spending money to buy this victory. Some I have to buy goats for a victorious life and for protection. Believers are blessed. You get protected without paying anything. You get protected by virtue of association. You get protected by virtue of your birth that you were born of God. And you are more than a conqueror. You pay no cent to be protected. There's no protection fee with God, Bazalwan. There's no protection fee. There's no protection fee. There's no protection fee. Victory comes from God through Jesus our Lord. That's where victory comes from. And be, because victory comes from God, it means the day he gave back to us, victory was also born. Oh, this is wonderful. You are a victory yourself. You are a victory. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. You are meant and destined for good and great things in life. They may not always be tangible, but you are meant to succeed and not fail. You are meant for influence. You are meant to impact. You are meant for transformation. You are meant for solution. You are meant for change. This is why God created you. And we know from Genesis that the Bible says God created heavens and the earth. And we know the rest of the things that he created from there. So when the Bible says we were born of God, it also means creativity was born. Ah, I don't know if you are hearing this. Because you are born of God and God is a creative God, it means when he gave birth to you, he gave birth to creativity. God is a God of solutions. It means the day he gave birth to you, solutions were given birth. Or he gave birth to solutions. Stop running around for solutions. You are the solution. You are the victory. You are the change. Look at yourself the way God looks at you. Agree with God that God, your word says I am more than a conqueror. Now I am a more than a conqueror. Yes, I may be experiencing challenges. Things may be tough in my life. Things may not be working. There may be hopeless. There may be darkness. But I know that I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. I know. I know. But son, this life is like a movie. And the executive producer is God. People, when you go to watch a movie at a cinema, you don't know the end of the movie, but the executive producer knows the end of the movie. When someone uh, behaves in a movie, and when you're busy, no, run away. No, no, why are you doing this? No, the executive producer does not react the way you are reacting. What surprises you in a movie does not surprise the executive producer because the executive producer knows the beginning and the end of the movie. You, are, you, the spectators or the audience, are the ones that are being surprised. 
So God knows your life. God knows your tomorrow. God knows your next year. God, God knows your tonight. That's why he says you are more than a conqueror. Nothing that is happening with you and around you is surprising God. It's only surprising you. And let me tell you the solution. If you do not want to be surprised by events in life, take a step back and start looking at things from the eyes of God and start looking at things from the eyes of, of the word and start looking at things from prayer, from the word, and you'll realize that, oh no, nothing surprises me because I'm starting to see things from God's perspective and not from a human perspective because most of the time when we look at things, we are looking at things from flesh and blood and not with the spirit man. If you can start looking at things from the eyes of the spirit man that has been born of God, you will not be surprised. You will not be shaken. You will not be living in fear. You will not be hopeless. But you will be full of hope because you know who you are in God and you know who God is in you. So victory is in God. Victory is in God. Let's stand. Victory is in God. Victory is in God. Victory is in prayer. Victory is in the word. Victory is in fellowship. Victory is in doing the word. Victory is through Christ. Victory is from God. There's victory. God, 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 God allowed you to be born not for defeat but for victorious life. You are not supposed to be defeated by what is defeating you now in your life. If you spend time in prayer, if you invested in the word and the word of God abide in you and then the Bible says you overcome. Because the Bible says those who are born of God, they overcome the world. And the evil one cannot touch them. This is what the Bible is talking about. And you are that victorious person. But you have allowed defeat in your life. Because even Satan himself does not have power over you. That's why he relies on you to permit him to come into your life. That's what the Bible says. Do not give Satan a foothold in your life. In other words, do not give Satan space in your life. I usually give people an example when I talk of Satan. To say Satan doesn't have a gun. But what he does, he knows that you've got a weapon. A weapon of prayer. A weapon of the word. A weapon of fellowship. But what he does, Satan, he comes to you. When you watch movies, you'll see a person comes and holds the gun. Especially those who do karate. All of a sudden, they take the gun and the gun points at you like this. That's how Satan works. He has no weapon that can overcome you. That's what the Bible says. No weapon formed against me. And you shall prosper. And the word of God is true. But we must ask ourselves, why have weapons prospered in our lives? Because this is how Satan worked. He came and he held your hand and he turned the gun and you, he faced the gun at you and you pulled the trigger against yourself. You pulled it. You pulled it. You pulled the trigger. And after you pulled the trigger, he leaves you. And you destroyed yourself. And because you have destroyed yourself, and, and you, you saw Satan holding uh, the, gun, the gun with you, and, and, and you pulled the trigger, he made you to pull the trigger against you. You are now thinking that Satan is all-powerful. Satan is not all-powerful. Only God is almighty. There's no scripture that says Satan is a victor. There's no scripture that says Satan is more than a conqueror. No. The scripture says we are more than conquerors. It is us who are victorious, not Satan. It is us. It is us who are victorious. It is us who are powerful in God. It is us who can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. There's no scripture that says Satan can do all things. He's not almighty Satan. In fact, the Bible says he's a defeated fool. 
Satan is defeated. Just imagine being beaten by a defeated someone. You are fit. Eh? You are fit. Because the word of God abides in you, but you are being beaten, punched by someone who's defeated already. So here's my encouragement to you, Bazaba. Go back to prayer. Go back to prayer. Start being a prayerful person. Be a prayerful young man. Be a prayerful young woman. Be a prayerful husband or wife. Be a prayerful mother or father. Be prayerful. And go to the word. Study the word. Meditate on the word. Do the word. Believe the word. Believe the word. I've seen people see the results because they've done the word. When you do the word, your life turns around. Most, most people are complaining that things are not happening in their lives. It is not because they don't know the word. They know the word, but they don't do the word. That's why sometimes things are not happening in your life because you are not doing the word. Doing the word brings results in your life. Trust me. Trust me. Jesus says to the disciples, throw the net into the deeper ends. And when the Bible says, then they threw the net and the, the more fish they were, they could not even put there because they were afraid that the net will tear apart because of the fish. Now, why did they get more the fish? Because they acted on the weight. Why did Peter walk on water? Because he acted on the weight. Believers must learn to act on the word. And what does the word say concerning you? The word says you are more than conqueror. Can you start walking like a conqueror? Can you start walking like a person who knows who they are in God? Stop walking and living defeated lives. Stop doing that. You are not defeated. You were not born for defeat. You were not born for failure. The failure that you go through, it's a systematic failure, but life failure, you were not born for it. You were not born for it. You were born for a victorious life. You were born for hope. You were born for future. That's why it says in Jeremiah that, ah, the Lord knows the plans I have. There is no plan in God to make you fail. There is no plan of God to destroy you. The only person that we know is a destroyer is the enemy. The Bible says, don't you know, that he is the, he's a thief, he's a murderer, he's a liar. God has never meant to lie to you and he can never lie to you. Whatever he has said concerning your life is true. But the one that is going to lie to you is the enemy. And how does the enemy lie? The enemy comes to you and tells you you are weak. The enemy lies to you and says God doesn't love you. The enemy comes and says the sin you've committed is too big. God will never forgive you. Those are the lies of the enemy. How do I know that those are the lies of the enemy? Because God says if anyone acknowledges their sins and confesses their sins and turn away from their sins, I will forgive them. That is the truth. But the enemy will never tell you this. The enemy will never tell you this. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I don't know your life. I don't know. I don't know what you have been battling with. I don't know why you were crying last night. I don't know. But you were crying last night. You were crying during the week and say, do I really deserve to live? Do I really deserve to be alive? Do I really deserve God? Where is my life going? Why? Because when you're asking yourself, where is your life going? You are even looking at your family and say, but everyone in my family is like me. So is there never going to be a change? Let me tell you, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a change. You were never meant to be defeated. But you have allowed defeat in your life. That door that you opened for Satan to come and defeat you, you've got to close it today. You've got to close that door. You've got to close that door. Because you are meant for good things in this life. You are meant to live a holy life. You are meant to glorify God. But the first victory we know is the victory that is in God. And only those that are in God can access this victory. Without God, no victory. Without Christ, no victory. Victory is brought by God. Victory is brought by Jesus. Victory is brought by prayer and the word. And if you are here 
You have come to church, you don't have the relationship with God. But I need to receive the Holy Ghost. I need to be victorious as well. If you are in this place, you want me to pray with you. This is where victory starts. If victory, it's a la, it's a la corner. Ogutu, Nigel, Impilia, Kogunkulunkul. 